Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Anticipation is mounting for today's game, and we've got two quarterbacks looking to make an impact. And Tom Savage's Texans going up against Jared Goff's Rams. With that, it's time to hook up with our commentators in the booth. So we turn it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, we appreciate it, Larry. It's our exclusive coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Who said the crowds wouldn't embrace football being back in L.A.? You certainly couldn't tell that by what we saw a few moments ago. These folks are pumped up as their Rams get set to do battle with the Houston Texans. Hi again, everybody, alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and you know, now more than ever, it's a passing league. We know that, and as Larry hit onto the open, we've got a couple of great passers squaring off here this afternoon. And usually the discussion centers in on how they're going to compete against the opposite defense. But you and I had a nice little chat with one of these guys in this game, <laughs> and they did say, look, I'm always competing against the opposite quarterback. If I play better than he does, I think my team has an advantage. Makes the handshake afterwards a little sweeter, too. Greg Zerline now. He'll handle the honors to get us started. And we are underway here in Los Angeles. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Houston coming off the close defeat last week to Indianapolis 20-14. And, yes, Tom Savage bringing out the Texans, of course, Deshaun Watson with the ACL injury. In that Colts game, Savage 19-44. Tough adjustment for him and the team trying to recover cover from losing the Sean Watson injury. I mean, that just takes the spirit out of a team. So they're trying to bounce back from that. But remember, when the season began, Tom Savage was a starting quarterback for the mm -hmm. Houston Texans. They're hoping to get that Tom Savage the rest of the year. Fake to Miller. Now Savage. Blitz coming and down he goes. Connor Barwin in from his linebacker spot. He's able to drop him for a loss of about 10. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage. Not a great start. Savage now on second. This one complete. It's C.J. Fedorowicz. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opened things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Aaron Donald with a big time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. Okay, was it a breakdown of protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Here now, Shane Leckler, 41-year-old punter, to kick it away. He'll kick it away after a three and out on the opening drive of the game. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Rams will go on offense here with a first and 10. This L.A. Rams offense led by Jared Goff has been fun to watch this year. They were fun to watch last week. 51 points in the win over the New York Giants. So what a turnaround from last year. I just don't think you can underestimate how good coaching and talent, when it meshes, this is what you get. Jared Goff went number one in the draft for a reason. Not because people just say, oh, we hope he can play. They knew he could play. 
And now, with Sean McVay, the new head coach, bringing in his system and, and utilizing it for his talents, the Rams are going to continue to elevate. And Goff had 311 yards last week on just 14 completions. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. Space to maneuver at the 40. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield and get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the Texans scoop it. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. Now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Now a first carry for Lamar Miller. That time, the right guard sending him backwards. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now, depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy. No matter what, though, you can't hold them. it down to about the 39. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Offensive starters here. Wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins, a talented, talented wide receiver. And he's still looking for that ultimate recognition. He wants to be mentioned with the best receivers in the game. His numbers suggest that we should do so. Second down following the run. the gun. Here's Savage. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. The pro bowler DeAndre Hopkins, the intended receiver, and it's third down. The starters on defense here for Los Angeles. Brandon McConnor Barwin came out of the University of Cincinnati. The thing I remember most about him was what he did while he was in college. Tight end, Played on the basketball team before moving over to defensive end at the behest of his head coach. And boy, has that paid off well for him. Started 96 consecutive games in Philadelphia. Signed with the Rams in the offseason to play outside linebacker again with a comfort zone in that defense. Third and long. It's Savage. That escapes the sack. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Here's Shane Leckler now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. 
don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. That run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all of their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through. Pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Again, they run with Gurley. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. And we introduce you to these starters now and Tavon Austin, a man who really doesn't need any introduction anymore in this league. He did it all when he's at the University of West Virginia. Played wide receiver, slot, return kicks, even lined up a tailback and ran for over 300 yards. All of those talents will be on display in this game. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. A gain of seven, and they pick up the first. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Down it's Gurley. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. And a look now at the defense for Houston. Benardrick McKinney is one of the tallest inside linebackers that you'll see in the game, but he has the bulk to go along with it. And I do think that his height is actually an advantage for him. It used to be that you worried about tall guys inside because they had to fight off low blocks. But I think his ability to see into the offensive backfield, see what's going on and read it, allows him to diagnose plays quicker and get there in a hurry. times do we say in this game is speed kills and it does it in so many different ways in this case you got a back who's quick and shifty can make moves make people miss but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down that's some of the benefits of that speed not just outrunning people in the secondary and that led to a really nice game on first down it's gone an incomplete crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense. And that fell harmlessly to the ground. Second down now after the incompletion. A shotgun snap for golf. And the open receiver, it's Robert Woods. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. Goff hitting Woods for a Rams first. And yes, home 
is where the heart is. And for Robert Woods, it's Los Angeles. He played college football at USC right here in this stadium. And probably feels comfortable out there. He was an All-American as a Trojan in 2011. Yeah, really trained to be an NFL player. I mean, he watched a lot of NFL cut-ups and tapes of wide receivers while he was in college before joining him on this stage. Back to the ground game here, Gurley. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 12 more yards there and another first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. Gurley again here on first down. And down inside the 15 he goes. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. That's another nice run. And I have to tell you, some of the coaches that I played for, their philosophies were always different when they see a guy running the ball well. Some of them wanted to immediately go to play action and throw it now because it's wide open. But other coaches said, you know something? Until they stop him, that big boy's going to keep getting the football. And that might be the direction that they're going to go right now. From the red zone now, gone. This will be caught at about the six. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up the first down. Keep the sticks moving. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. They'll try and push it in with Gurley. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. With that kind of loss of yards, that is usually an error by the guy carrying the ball. At the one-yard line, you can't get too fancy there. You just got to try and plow forward and get what you can. It's just a disaster. You go back to the six after you were at the one. Try on second down with Gurley. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Todd Gurley, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Rams are going to take a first-quarter lead. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. It's up. It's good. And the Rams take a 7-0 lead. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And it's finished off by a Todd Gurley touchdown run.
Zerline out now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. Savage on first down. Right side caught Fedorowicz. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Give him nine there on the first down completion. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Running left is Miller. <laughs> it goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there, pick up the first down. Keep it with Miller on first down. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense, and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock. You control the ball. And that way, you often control the game. Second down, here's Savage. And on the left side, Fedorowicz has it. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Savage from the shotgun snap. He finds his target, Fuller. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. Tom Savage took over as a starting quarterback late in 2016, but got hurt, unable to play in the playoffs. But he's back in trenches, Bill O'Brien's number one QB starting 2017. But Sean Watson, their number one choice, <laughs> lurking in the wings. Before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. 7-0 is our score. We're back to Southern California right after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's Texans football as we get going in quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten.
They go play action here on first down. Throw left side complete. It's Fuller. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. A gain of 32 that time. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. Seven yards on the pick up there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? again with Miller. Four yards on the play, and that leads to the first and goal. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. This is Deontay Foreman, and he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. A great play there, taking it in. And the Texans are an extra point away from tying this football game. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. That time, a nine-play drive, and it was finished off by Deontay Foreman on the touchdown run. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. Todd Gurley in the offense. They get set and trot back out there now. You see the numbers, all those carries. If you get that many carries in the drive, you better finish it with a touchdown. And he did. Yeah, and, and deservedly so, right? Because we've seen times like the Carolina Panthers, sometimes Jonathan Stewart to carry the ball the way down, and then Cam, he's such a great goal line runner, he'll carry it in. But in this case, though, that didn't happen. The fellow lugging the load, he's the one who got to reap the reward. Yeah, there was no touchdown vulture here. Start out on the ground with Gurley. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. Now on 
second down. This is Gurley. And a nice little quick spin move before he's dropped. And a pretty good gain. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that's going to bring up a third down. Look, the first down marker is out there, but sometimes it's hard to find for an offense when they're in a long yardage situation, which usually means throw the football. In this case, they went against the tendency and ran it, and boy, the reward was there. A big, big pickup, and guess what? It's now third and very short in order to try and pick up a first down. Third down, they'll run it with Gurley. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Give them a lot of credit. They ended up running the ball on a key third down situation. They were staring three and out in the face and found a way to flip the script and keep the ball moving on offense. yard line. It's a seven yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Take the handoff. Now go off. Austin's got it left side. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A nice gain of 21 yards. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. his way forward here for a good little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And hey, when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. To throw on second down is gone. And Woods has it complete. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. Goff gives to Gurley. And not much to speak of there. Maybe a yard down to the 20. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. Here's Goff now on second down. Completes it right side to Cooper. 
And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. From the gun, here's gone. And he's got it. That's cut for a Ram touchdown. did get those feet in there on the side of the end zone well done probably the exact size foot necessary because i think if he had another half size that, that catch doesn't count and he's able to get it in and it counts for a touchdown and there's going to be a stoppage here the booth wants to take another look at this potential touchdown Zerline now for the PAT. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. Zerline out now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. And the Texans set to come onto the field. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. Lamar Miller and not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. And when the defense wins and gives up no yardage on a running play, that's something they can build on and carry themselves forward throughout the game. Second down to Savage. And his throw is incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. The Texans on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Out of the gun, 
Savage. And the Reds got him. They bring him down. Connor Barwin in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Here's Shane Leckler now, standing just outside his own goal line. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Fielded at about the 28. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. Now Zerline on to add the extra point. It's good, and it is now 21-7. to seven. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass, and that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown. Kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Tom Savage and the rest of his Texans offense heading back out there. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him. Has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Uh, he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. Play fake here on first down. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Well, this seems like a good time to make a quick pivot here and go back to week nine of the NFL because there were some pretty big milestones that were passed. Can we start with a kicker? Because we're going Adam to. Adam Vinatieri. Look, Adam Vinatieri to me is a first ballot Hall of Famer. I mean, what he's accomplished here, now he's in sole possession, second place in the league's all-time scoring list with 2,442 points. 
needs 103 more. But we're chased down the Hall of Famer, Morton Anderson. And yet Eli go over 50K passing yards. Jameis over 10K, second youngest to do that. And then Larry Fitzgerald, what did he do? Yeah, and the win against the 49ers moved into sixth place all time in receiving yards, passing Hall of Famer Tim Brown. How about Larry Fitz? Nice job there defensively on third down. Not only did they string the play out, but they didn't allow any room for a cutback. Really well organized on the defensive side. Under four to play now. Clock running, third down. Operating from the gun, Savage. And that is incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Here's Shane Lackler now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Turns and gives to Gerlin. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Now this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. Stick to the ground game with Gurley. And he'll be limited into a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient. Followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. Second down, here's golf. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Jadevian Cloudy in there to take him down and to take us to the two-minute warning. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Larry Ridley in Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. Back to the workhorse today. It's Gurley. Now well, the Texans are going to stop it as a signal for a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play.
It's Johnny Hecker now, an all-pro three of the last four years on to punt. Back deep for the Texans, Will Fuller. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. Getting set to go again, DeAndre Hopkins marches back onto the field. Hasn't had his best day to this point here in the second quarter, and they're losing. you got to think, though, that also means that maybe the defense doing a good job on him. There's two sides to that coin. I would agree, so you have to give them credit, but that means you've got to find a way to beat that defense and make sure one of your top playmakers touches the football and has an impact on the game. Change formations, change where he lines up, put him in motion anything possible to shake him free. Maybe that greater impact comes here on this drive. On first down, it's Savage. He's got it complete to Braxton Miller. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Looking to throw on second down. Savage dumps it complete to Miller. He finds an opening past the 40. And he takes this one just shy of midfield all the way to the 49. And a nice gain of 21 yards. On first and 10, Savage. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Aaron Donald in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. On second down, here's Miller. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Now Foreman. And now the Rams are going to halt things as they want a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Here's Shane Leckler now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And this will pin him back deep. That's going to kick out of bounds right at about the seven-yard line. Jared Goff and the Rams headed back onto the field. He's been in a pretty good group. They actually have more yards on the ground than through the air, but both have been good, pretty balanced. And have we ever met a coach when we've talked to him before a game that hasn't mentioned wanting to be balanced? No, because then you've got both sides hitting the defense. They don't know what to expect, right? Really helps your play calling because now you're in a position where you're confident in either one, either aspect of the game. Dial it up and let it go. And so far, that's allowed them to lead. Absolutely. Have the lead here in the second quarter. Goff on first down. And he's got his receiver. That's Sammy Watkins. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. 
as he'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. This half has been theirs. The Zerline now for the PAT. He knocks it through. It's 28-7. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. Zerline out now to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Savage. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. With a sling in it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. So second and ten here. again. Savage. He gets this one to Bruce Ellington. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. So the offense takes the timeout and they are back out and ready to rock. So here we go, first and ten now. Right, here we go. Three, Three, From the gun, here's Savage. He's going to let this one go. Got a man, it's caught inside the ten. 
And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. Braxton Miller in the final seconds of the first half. And the Texans cut into that lead. Terrific. Touchdown. I know we've got a game now. Yeah, I think anytime you go to the second half down just one or two scores, you feel not where you want to be, but in a pretty good spot. And I think for most teams, when they go into the half in this situation, it's not a lot of adjusting going on. It's much more, all right, guys, let's just play a little bit better than we did in the first half. Extra point attempt to come here. It's up and good, and it's now 28 to 14. The drive there only spanning three plays. And the result, a Houston touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the 1. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Time running down, they go down to a knee. So we come upon halftime here in Southern California with the Rams on top. As we send you across the country to Orlando, standing by there, Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Rams are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Texans won't panic either, they know they just need to take it one play at a time. All right, let's get straight to it. Here's some highlights from the first half. Rams with the ball late in the first. Gurley is going to stay up the middle, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown as they take a 7-0 lead. Now first and 10, Fuller is wide open, able to make the grab, and he'll be tackled at the 11-yard line. Texans have it later on the drive. They'll cut it out right on the outside run. And he kept off the long drive with the TD. We're brand new at seven. Third and seven. Goff able to hook up with his rookie wideout, Cooper Cup. And he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. The Rams is up now by seven. First and ten. Jared Goff getting it into the hands of Tyler Higby. And he'll win the sprint to the end zone as they go out in front, 14 to seven. the ball late in the half. Watkins is by himself here and he'll take this all the way for a touchdown. Rams up now by 21. Texans have it late in the second. The catch will be made deep down the field and ends up working for a touchdown. Texans down by 14. Okay, Larry, thank you and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team. That Their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Now whistles and a flag down. I think one of the Rams linemen might have moved. And that'll set them back five. Still first down. Shotgun snap for gone. And this is going to be incomplete. He was looking for Todd Gurley. And it's second down. All right, you ready to go on a tangent with me here real Let's quick? Let's go. You, Let's go. We were discussing off air the top five picks in the 2016 draft. Boy, those guys are having good seasons, aren't they? They really nailed that one, didn't they? And you go right to the top because Jared Goff, many people wanted to call it bust last year. Oh, no, not at all. The Rams are 6-2. and two. He's playing awfully well as their quarterback. Carson Wentz continues to ascend in Philadelphia. Joey Bosa, not many people blocking him out there in L.A., that's for sure. Zeke's still the premier running back in the league. And Jalen Ramsey is a shutdown corner playing with a lot of aggressiveness. But I think it's also a deep draft. Jordan Howard was a fifth-round pick, right? Dak Prescott, a yep. fourth-round pick, right? I mean, we're talking about guys who can flat-out play. And don't forget Tyreek Hill from Kansas City, Mr. Long Distance himself. Oh, yeah, he's pretty good, too. The Rams on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This is third down and 12. Now gone. Wide open receiver complete. Golf fighting fellow second year man Higby for a Rams first down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. This one to Gurley, and he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But if the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Trayvon Austin, he's going to go. Touchdown, L.A. Trayvon Austin, 56 yards. And the Rams add on to their lead. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. Now Zerline on to add the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. 
So the drive there, five plays, 80 yards. And the finishing touch was that nice long run into the end zone. Zerline out now to kick this one away. Here comes Bruce Ellington on the return. And some space here. And it'll be an excellent return as he's all the way down inside the 25-yard line. We all know the teams never want to use the word panic. But if they expect to win this game, it has to start right here, right now. That return just set them up for points, and it needs to be a touchdown, not a field goal. Here's the Texans' offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game, a chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever they do, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. And Miller with it over the middle. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there for the Texans. So they're on that play. Offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. Let's go. Savage on first. And his throw here is incomplete. C.J. Fedorowicz, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow... Incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to get him inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. Well, as the play call comes in on third down, you have to think about four down territory here. Down a few touchdowns, they need points, and they need big points. The Texans on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. This time, it's third and three. Hurry up, here we go. Green, 39. Ah! From the gun, Savage. And got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Houston. DeAndre Hopkins from four yards out. And the Texans get a bit closer. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there was an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. And a pause in the action because the booth, they see something that they want to take another peek at to find out if this was a touchdown or not. Extra point forthcoming. And 
the lead will be cut down to 14. So that drive, four plays, and it results in the Texans finding the end zone. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. And our attention shifts to Todd Gurley. He's up over 100 yards and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Has a tremendous nose for it, doesn't he? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's the combination you want in your runner. That's yeah, a combination any coach wants, and we'll see if he can find that end zone once more. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. down it's gone and it's a short one here complete to his tight end and he takes this one just shy of midfield all the way to the 49 23 yards on the play but when you hit him on the move like that and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam oh boy it's gonna be tough to get him down yeah there was a big window they're lucky they did get him down set of downs here. Here comes a 20th carry for Gurley. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball. But I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. Another carry now for Gurley. Gurley's got the first down of Insel. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. That good for 19 at a first down. I know anytime you watch a team run the ball really well, there's some pinball effect, people bouncing off of each other. There's also some things of beauty in there. When you see these nice, explosive, strong runs, and this guy, he knows how to carry the football really well and continually wants the football. Why? He knows the offensive line's going to give him great effort, and he gives great effort himself to finish off runs. Now a first down throw, goal. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. That throw good for four. It's second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet inbounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Goff now to throw. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Well, we knew this guy wasn't especially fleet of foot, but he tried to conjure up some escapability, but there was no way he was getting away on that one.
So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. To throw is Goff. Able to shake him off. And the pressure gets to him again. Jadevian Clowney in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. And it has been a good game for them. They haven't been pressured very much today. But on back-to-back -back sacks, maybe the defense is starting to figure something out. Here's Johnny Hacker now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away. And boy, it's another boomer. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. gives me a chance to ask you who your MVP is in oh, the really? NFL right really? now. Who are you going with? Well, there's so many different choices, right? Tom Brady's a perennial, and you can never go wrong with him, and he's still rallying New England. He's got but, too many trophies. Oh, look Give at me you. somebody else. Look at you. You can't sing <laughs> him for that. But uh, listen, to me, it comes down to Carson Wentz in Philadelphia having an extraordinary <laughs> second season, and what Alex Smith is doing in Kansas City cannot be overestimated right now. And I'm going to go with Alex Smith because head-to-head, -head, his Kansas City Chiefs beat the Philadelphia Eagles. That's true. If the Eagles, though, 8-1 and one right now. Should be interesting to watch the rest of the way. Sounds like you're making a case for Carson Wentz. I am. The Texans on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This is third and nine. Let's go! Three, let's go! Savage from the shotgun snap. He's going to float this one deep right side. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw, unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. Here's Shane Lackler now, standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. Averaging 50 yards a boot so far as this one's away. And taken right on the 30. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Getting set to go again here on offense. Jared Goff trots back onto the field. He has been consistent, hasn't he? He played well in the first quarter. Good second quarter and now continuing that here in the third. And that's the word that they're always seeking from the guy taking the snaps is consistency. Taking care of the ball, making sure it gets to the right people. No errors, right? Not turning it over and just doing all the right things. That's leadership and it inspires confidence in a team. Yeah, been a good leadership and a good distributor. Now Goff on first down. Throwing over the middle. It's incomplete. Sammy Watkins, the intended target, and now it's second down. So the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot, but they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. On the handoff, it's Gurley. And he's across the 40, three extra yards to the 43. Nine yards on the pickup there as he'll be left with third and one. 
Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling him in the huddle right now. The Rams on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Gone. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage looked defensively. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Another good run for him. What else is new? That'll put him right at 150 yards for the game. So he's really made his presence felt in this one. To throw on second down is gone. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. That catch good for five. It's third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. Here's Gall. Throwing in a traffic there, and that's complete. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Pretty heavy traffic over the middle on that one, and somehow he emerged with the football. Way to possess it, despite all the extra contact and people around him. First and ten, golf. Working the middle here. That's complete to Everett, the tight end. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Bernardrick McKinney in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. On the draw, Goff gives to Gurley. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game, but what a nice play by the defense. Stepping up on that one, maybe they'll get things going in their direction after a play like that. So on fourth down, Goff will yield to Greg Zerline for the field goal try. This officially a 55-yard attempt. 
And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. They'll try and get the run game going. This is Miller. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. So both teams trade touchdowns, and the third is worth through three quarters of play. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Los Angeles. It's Texans football, but they trail here as we get started in the fourth quarter. Now the offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. Gun, Savage. And I think that one might have been intercepted, but he will be ruled out of bounds. So this will go only as incomplete. And that's why defenders are often frustrated offensive guys. Actually made the catch, looked good doing it, but couldn't get his feet down in order to finish off the takeaway. But Texans on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third down and 12. Operating from the gun, Savage. It's hauled in by Ellington. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there for the Texans. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Savage on first down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Fuller. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Will Fuller, 43 yards. And the Texans have cut it to within a score. And a nice job by him to catch the slant and then navigate and break free. And receivers love slant routes because it gets the ball in their hands so quickly and oftentimes on the move. And when they're on the move like that, then they get to use their best asset, which is usually their speed. And their speed sometimes, like this instance, can take them into the end zone. Out comes the kicking team here for the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down now to a touchdown. A drive there of just four plays. And the result, a Houston touchdown. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken at his four. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Jared Goff and the Rams headed back onto the field. And the stats on the screen tell the story. A great start 
This defense, they made some good adjustments, so he's fallen off since. Have to like what they did at the half, but you also have to like the fact that they hung in there. Despite the fact they had a tough first half, he was locked in, right? Rocking and rolling. They came out, made their adjustments, got their confidence back. Now they're causing him all sorts of trouble. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On first down, gone. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. From the gun, here's gone. Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. D.J. Reader in there to record another sack, their sixth of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. So Goff, he'll try to refocus after the sack. The Rams now set up with a tough one, a third and long. Here's Goff. And this is going to be incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. This is fielded at the 27. Wrap up. Still moving. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. We have seen a lot of points here in this quarter. For us up here in the booth, it's been fun to watch. The defensive coordinators probably scratching their heads. Yeah, they're going a little bit crazy right now. But let's face it, all of our friends who play fantasy, <laughs> they're enjoying the heck out of this show because most of them are creating and getting a bunch of points. Yeah, points certainly not at a premium here. First and ten, Savage. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. And on second and ten now. to throw again. Savage. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. The Texans on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities. Three for nine. This is third and ten. From the gun, Savage. And he'll be hit from behind and taken down. Aaron Donald able to disrupt yet another pass play, his third sack of the afternoon. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying <laughs> to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness that defensive line is eating them alive. Here's Shane Leckler now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Oh, 
Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. Great coverage there holds him to a two-yard return following a 50-yard punt. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now a handoff for Gurley. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all in your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game, you're trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. A play fake to Gurley. Now Goff. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Another nice pick up through the air. And I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon. But with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. They go play action here on first down. And that's caught left side. It's Woods. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. And now a first down following that long game. And they're going to take it all the way down and just take the delay. That's going to set them back five yards. Still first down. It's Gurley. Eventually wrangled down before reaching the 20, but a strong run. And a nice run to get him past the original line of scrimmage. A gain of seven. It's second and eight now. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run. Not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount. And he got it done. Nursing that slim lead. You're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Golf. This throw caught right around the six. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Gerald Everett, a 22-yard touchdown grab. And the Rams add on to their lead. Well, after another passing touchdown, I don't think it'd be an understatement to say that he's in the zone, and I believe he likes it. Zerline now for the PAT. 
And the lead is up to 14. Five plays there on that drive. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. Zerline out now to kick this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And now out comes Houston. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. There you go now. Ah! On first down, it's Savage. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Right, here we go. Green, three. Second and ten, going with Savage again. Caught. Left side, Hopkins. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. Hard to believe his first catch of the game defensively. They bottled him up. That's why they're well on their way to victory. Put your best cover guy on him and then change the coverages behind him throughout the game. Brackets, double, zone, man, you name it. Make sure he gets a lot of angles. First down throw coming. Savage. And he just gets rid of it. Throws it away. The wise move there looked like nobody open. Now second down. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be getting rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Ten yards still left on second down. Throwing again, Savage. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense. Aaron Donald, who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. So after the sack of Savage, the Texans with a third and long fourth coming. All right, here we go. They'll run it now out of the gun. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Give them a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. Here's Shane Leckler now. He's been terrific so far. <laughs> 46 yards on the boot. The coverage holds him to just three on the return. And possession will switch hands first and ten. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? 
I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went, no adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And he'll work his way across the 30 to the 32. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Off play action. Here's Goff. Going deep here for Watkins. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in this second half. Instead, it's third down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? The Rams on third down. They're hitting at 60%, 6 out of 10 thus far. This time they face a third and two. Now gone. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Zach Cunningham in there with pressure yet again, and that's the seventh time they've dropped him here this afternoon. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And that will bounce out of bounds before they can get a return going. And now out comes Houston. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. And tough starting field position here. Now a quick handoff, and this is the fullback, Prosh. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. A gain of three, second down. And that was a good collision right there. And I know this as a former defender. If you're playing linebacker, you're going through a checklist on every play who you think's going to get the ball, where you think the ball's going to go. Rarely do you expect the fullback position to get it. And on that play, he did. So you've got to steal yourself at that point because the contact is going to be strong. Now a handoff to Miller. And not much there as he gets it up to about the five-yard line. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. The Texans on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This will be third and five. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they'll mark him down right around the nine, just shy of the ten. Four yards on the pick up there, but it's going to take him to fourth down. Well, look at the clock. You're down two scores. Have to go for this, don't you? And they thought that as soon as they took over possession. It didn't matter where they were on the field. They were always going to be in four-down territory. Backed up in good situation. It didn't matter. So they've been preparing for that on their play sheet the entire time. 
All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll run. It's Miller. And now Miller hit, and he fumbles. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. first. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Second and ten, Savage. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off at the 25, and he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock, had to throw it. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. They want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. After the interception, here's Golf. And his throw's going to be incomplete. He was looking for Cooper Cup there, and that'll bring up second down. Not too many missteps in the red zone thus far. He was going for his fifth touchdown pass. His man couldn't shake free there, but boy, you know he's going to take another shot before this one's over. Yeah, exactly, because you know three is good, four is excellent. <laughs> you get five, that's a whale of a game. They run. It's Gurley. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. They'll wind up losing four yards on the play. And it's going to be third down and a ways to go here. Third and 14. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long. He's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So it's Rams football here as we get your reset. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Again, they run with Gurley, and he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. All right, so the timeout over, and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense.
So on fourth down, Goff will yield to Greg Zerline for the field goal try. This to make it a three-score game late. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. And you figure with that, this game's pretty well out of reach. It would take a heck of a comeback at this point, being three scores down. I think that's too much to ask with time winding down here in the fourth. Field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. And now out comes Houston. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for Pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone infraction, defense. They'll so step off the five yards. Yeah, partner, you know, defensive end, he wants to get into the offensive backfield. He wants that get off to be as fast as possible. A little too quick on that one. going to be incomplete. Will Fuller was the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Second down to the offense needing five yards. Here we go now. Three, 19. Operating from the gun. Savage. And the Rams got it. They bring him down. And before they can run this third down play, we're going to get a timeout. As they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. go nickel here defensively on third. From the gun, Savage. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Robert Quinn, he's the one to get him this time, and back-to-back -back sacks are going to bring up a fourth down. Fourth down, desperation time for Savage. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that's going to be just about all she wrote for this one. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. getting set to go now and after the field goal last time we'll see what they can get here at least they got points out of the last drive Charles 
I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that <laughs> weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Gurley. And they'll get him down right about the 20. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Rams are victorious here as we...